Good evening and welcome to the Daily Aztec broadcast. I'm Reese Savoy. And I'm Jenna Meyer. On March 20th, San Diegans took to the streets of downtown following the March 16th shooting of eight individuals in Atlanta, six of whom were Asian American women. Roughly 100 San Diegans expressed their support and marched in solidarity with the Asian American community in hopes of prompting not only local but also national change in the fight against Asian hate. Daily Aztec reporter Patrick Doyle went to the rally and has more on the scene. Take a look. It is Saturday, March 20th, and I'm here at the Stop Asian Hate Rally in downtown San Diego. In the wake of the Atlanta shootings, which left eight people dead, including six Asian Americans, San Diegans Alice and Tony put on a demonstration to protest violence and racism against Asian Americans. The couple runs an Instagram account called Stop Asian Hate San Diego, where they support members of the Asian, Pacific Islander, and Desi American communities. Before the march began, the organizers invited people to speak about their own experiences dealing with violence targeted at them because of their race. Multiple people came up to tell their stories, including Tony, who recounted an experience only a week ago when a man on his bike pushed her over for no apparent reason. I, I tried to laugh it off, and it just started eating at me. It just started eating at me. I'm a loud, outgoing person. I have been all my life, and the moment that I needed my voice, I didn't use it. I want you guys to use your voice. I want you to find your voice today. Roughly a hundred demonstrators marched together around the streets of downtown. The rally was met with support from the community, with cars honking their horns every block and people in restaurants cheering as the demonstrators walked by. Some people in the front of the marching line even played snare drums in tandem with the rhythmic chants condemning violence against members of the APIDA communities. Many of the rally goers were angry and frightened in the wake of the Atlanta shootings, and some felt that the shootings were just the culmination of centuries of racism against Asian Americans. Filipino American D. de Guzman felt disoriented when he first heard about the attacks. I was confused. I didn't know what was happening. And when it happened and you saw how methodical it was, you couldn't help but think it was a racially driven uh, attack. I'm not out here out of concern for my safety. I'm here because of the elders that feel this way. The fact that my mother tells me she has fears of walking outside is what saddens me the most. Other people, like rally organizer Alice, felt the attacks were personal. You know, the events of this past week really struck me. You know, I saw my family behind that gun and I saw my family being uh, harassed and attacked on the street, you know. I, I could see myself, my reflection, myself in these people, and it just broke my heart to know that there's such hatred out in the world. And I wanted to bring everyone together to create a space of healing and a space of unity so we know that we are not alone and that we are valued and supported by our community. At the end of the rally, Alice and Tony encouraged the marchers to support local Asian restaurants. They said that the fight was not over, but felt optimistic about the future after seeing how much support there was from the community. Alice in particular felt that gatherings like this can have a lasting effect. I want us to create, you know, a, a ripple effect, a chain reaction that kindness will bring more kindness. Unity will bring more unity, and that's what I hope for at the greatest, but at the least, this is a space for us to talk and say our piece and say what we have to say to our community and show support and love for one another and our children. The attendees of this rally expressed to me that they did not think this rally would end all racism against Asian Americans, but they hoped it would help make a change and help their voices be heard. And for The Daily Aztec, I'm Patrick Doyle. Although basketball season is over, the home of the San Diego State Aztecs will remain full. On Wednesday, March 23rd, Viejas Arena became San Diego's latest COVID-19 vaccination site. 10% of the vaccination appointments will be reserved for a new program called the Scheduling Assistance for Vaccine Equity, as known as Project SAVE, whose goal is to allow easy access for eligible communities across San Diego County to get vaccinated. Around 200 appointments will be available at Viejas. The arena's hours of operations will be Tuesday through Saturday from 9.30 a.m to 3.30 p.m. Multimedia editor Angela Kirsch went to the vaccine site and has more information. Check it out. Looking to get vaccinated? Look no further. San Diego State University and San Diego County have partnered to announce a new vaccination station at Viejas Arena. 
County Board Supervisor Nathan Fletcher was here this morning to announce that starting tomorrow, March 23rd, vaccines will be available to those who are eligible from Tuesday to Saturday from 9.30 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. It will showcase our community coming together to administer vaccines in an equitable way uh, and will help pave the pathway for our recovery. The opening of a robust vaccination site at this well-known location uh, offers an important expansion of our ability to not only administer vaccines, but to ensure an equity-based focus. In partnership with Pilot Project, Project Save, 10% of the appointments at VA House Arena will be reserved for those in the county's hardest hit communities, according to Fletcher and SDSU Associate Vice President of Health, Wellbeing and Accessibility, Andrea Dooley. We appreciate the opportunity at San Diego State to host this county operated site. Some of the communities that have partnered up with Project Save and attended today's press conference include the San Diego Refugee Communities Coalition and the Somali Family Services of San Diego. Having equitable distribution of the vaccines, um, since equity is at the forefront of all that we do, to echo what everyone has already spoken about, um, is imperative. Um, having equitable access to the vaccines is part of that and having a vaccine site in such um, close proximity to the community is something that we're so excited about. We're really happy to be able to share this news with our community, our community health workers, so that our community can stay healthy and safe and get vaccinated. With the vaccination site opening tomorrow, the county predicts that around 700 vaccines will be administered per day and hope to increase that number to 1,500 based on supply. And for The Daily Aztec, I'm Angela Kurish. Now on to sports. Number six seed San Diego State men's basketball fell to the 11th seeded Syracuse in the first round of the NCAA tournament on March 19th. SDSU entered March Madness as the reigning Mountain West Conference Tournament champs on a 14 game win streak and were expected to make a deep run. However, the Aztecs were unable to overcome the Orange's trademark 2-3 zone. In addition to a suffocating defense, Syracuse came to play offensively. While the Aztecs struggled to make baskets, Syracuse set an NCAA tournament record with 15 three-pointers in a single game. Seven of those shots came from Syracuse junior guard Buddy Bayheim, who led his team with 30 points. The Orange, who shot 55.6 from outside the paint, held the Aztecs to 27.5% in three-point field goals. Senior guard Jordan Shackle, ranked number three in the nation for three-point shooting, was contained to just five of 13 from beyond the arc. Despite the loss, head coach Brian Dutcher said he was proud of everything his team accomplished. San Diego State finished their season with an impressive 23-5 record. On March 22nd, the last remaining section of SDCCU was demolished. This is the end of an era for SDSU. Assistant Sports Editor Luis Lopez has more on the story. Since August, construction workers have been tearing down SDCCU Stadium piece by piece. Well, today those final pieces came down as San Diego State moves from the past to the future with Aztec Stadium here in Mission Valley. On March 22nd, the last remaining section of SDCCU Stadium was taken down. Workers began the process by removing the light tower on top of the section. Following that, workers spent the rest of the day getting rid of what was left of the structure. The demolition process began back in August of last year. With Monday's teardown, no part of the stadium will be visible from the I-8 and I-15 freeways anymore. There may not be any more parts of the stadium that fans will be able to see, but there are still parts of the plaza level that need to be removed. The teardown on Monday was seen as an official end to the stadium's history. Yeah, I mean, for San Diego State, we, we played in San Diego Stadium for, you know, since it opened, and so it is a moment that we wanted to reflect on and, and have this last bit of the stadium coming down, but we also see the new Aztec Stadium coming up in, in, at the same time, and so it's really sort of the end of one era and the start of another. Once the plaza level is removed, Work will begin on installing utilities for the stadium and the different buildings surrounding it. As of right now, construction is still on schedule to be completed by the fall 2022 semester. By then, both the Mission Valley campus and Aztec Stadium will be ready to open. And for The Daily Aztec, I'm Luis Lopez. That's all from us here in the studio. Thanks for watching and make sure to keep your eyes peeled for our next broadcast on all of the latest SDSU news. And for The Daily Aztec, I'm Jenna Meyer. And I'm Reese Savoy. Stay healthy and have a great day.